welcome to the car cult. On today's show, we launch a new series on the car cult channel, the history of cars. In this series, we explore the nearly 200 years of the motor car. We will be diving deep into car brands and models of today and yesteryear. We will be exploring how the invention of the motor car changed the course of history and left an indelible mark on human civilization. So buckle up for some of the most fascinating stories that the motor world and history has to offer. On our very first show, we will be taking a look at how the venerable Ford Motor Company helped win World War I for the Allies. From 1914 to 1918, the war to end all wars led to the death of millions and the destruction of much of Europe. At the same time, the Great War was transformative for the motor industry, both in the use of vehicles on the battlefield and for the way we all choose to travel to work, to visit the local shopping mall or traveling cross-country for a holiday break. Chapter 1. The Beginnings The Ford Motor Company was founded in 1903 by Henry Ford. Henry was the eldest of six siblings born in 1863 in Michigan. Henry's parents... William and Mary Ford were farmers, but this was not the destiny for Henry. By the time he was 12, Henry was spending most of his spare time in a small machine shop, and at 15 he would construct his first steam engine. As a young man, Henry moved to Detroit and became an apprentice at a number of different companies before he landed an engineer role at the Edison Illuminating Company in 1891. Henry quickly progressed and soon became chief engineer, which allowed him to branch out on his own. Thomas Edison would become Henry's lifelong mentor and friend. In 1896, Henry created the quadricycle, his very first car, at home. Henry Ford went on to found the Detroit Automobile Company in 1899. This turned into a disaster for Ford and its investors when only 20 vehicles were built and $86,000 were lost. The company was reorganized into the Henry Ford Company. Henry would go on to leave the company bearing his own name in 1902, which was again reorganized into the Cadillac Automobile Company by Henry Leland. In 1903, the Ford Motor Company would be founded by Henry Ford and a group of investors. The first car to be built by the company, the Model A, would be sold a month later in July 1903. In 1908, Ford would introduce the Model T to America and the world. Demand was so high, Ford were forced into developing a new revolutionary mass production technique. This innovation allowed a new Model T to be built from start to finish in just 90 minutes. By 1911, Ford would expand out of their Mack Avenue plant with a branch assembly plant in Kansas City, the first of its kind. Another first would be the company's overseas production plant in Manchester, England. The revolution in car production would not end there. In 1913, Henry Ford introduced the world's first moving assembly line for cars, and in 1914 would seek to further boost production by increasing daily wages to $5 for an eight-hour day. By mid-1914, there were more than 500,000 Model Ts on the roads around the world. The success of the industrialist Henry Ford and his Ford Motor Company appeared to be unstoppable. Unbeknownst to Ford and to the rest of America, the world was to be plunged into war on a scale and ferocity of which had never been seen before. Chapter 2. The Great War on June 28, 1914, the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne is shot dead by a gunman, Gavrilo Princip, during a visit to Sarajevo, the capital of the Austrian province Bosnia. The killer is backed by Serbian terrorist group, the Black Hand. This triggers frantic negotiations between the great powers of the time, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Germans, Russia, France, and Britain. Serbia refuses to abide by all the onerous demands placed on it by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. On July 28, backed by Germany, 
Austria. Hungary declares war on Serbia. Russia quickly steps in to support its ally and mobilizes its army. Germany then goes on to declare war on Russia. France begins preparations for war as a supporter of Russia. Whilst many view the fighting will be short-lived and the leaders of these nations will see sense, the war will go on to drag the British Empire into the conflict when Germany attacks France via neutral Belgium. With the entry of Britain into the conflict, this becomes the first truly global war, and by early August reaches into the overseas territories of France, Britain, and Germany in Africa. World War I goes on to also be the first mechanized war, with the introduction of tanks and armored cars and trucks beginning to replace the traditional horse and cart. The first offensive using tanks takes place on September 15, 1916, during the Battle of the Somme, when the Mark I type British tank is committed to the Allies' offensive against the Germans. This results in some small localized successes. With much of the world at war, one emerging power, the United States of America has followed American public opinion and stayed out of the war. However, over time, as word of the atrocities committed by the Germans reached the shores of the United States and the sinking of the passenger liner RMS Lusitania by a German U-boat, killing all 1,198 passengers and crew on board, including 128 American citizens that opinion begins to shift. In April 1917, some two and a half years after the start of the war, the Americans throw its full support behind the Allies. Chapter 3. Ford Enters the War Mirroring the reluctance of the United States of America to enter into the war, Henry Ford and the Ford Motor Company only started to contribute to the Allies' cause from spring 1917. Prior to this, the Ford Motor Company refused to take orders for any war-related equipment from any country. Henry Ford cited selling war-related equipment and helping any foreign state as at variance with our human principles. Henry Ford's reservations about the war stemmed from his pacifist beliefs that war was created by people who stood to profit from it. In his autobiography, My Life and Work, when commenting on World War I, he said, I have never been able to discover any honorable reason for the beginning of the World War. It seems to have grown out of a very complicated situation created largely by those who thought they could profit by war. Henry Ford would go on to finance a diplomatic mission to Europe in 1915 when he commissioned the Oscar II ocean liner to become the peace ship to carry himself and several prominent peace activists to Europe. This mission was widely ridiculed in the press and lived up to its low expectations when the negative reaction in the press caused infighting amongst the group and there was a flu outbreak on board. Ford left Norway five days after arriving having fallen ill and realizing that the mission had failed. Ford would go on to say in his autobiography that he did not regret the failed mission and we learn more from our failures than from our successes. Once the decision was made to support the American war effort, the Ford factories ramped up production and produced some of the icons of the war including various versions of the Model T and the Ford 3-ton M. 1918. The Ford Motor Company would go on to also produce war boats, military trucks, cannons, and work on research and development into armor technology for vehicles and soldiers on the front lines. Here is a rundown of some of the most important contributions from the Ford Motor Company during World War I. Chapter 4 Model T, Great Britain and France, would approach Ford in order to acquire Model Ts for military purposes early in the war. However, Henry Ford's isolationist and pacifist views would put an end to any contributions from Ford to the Allies. The turning point would be the entry of the United States of America into the war. The Model T itself would be adapted for various purposes during the course of World War I. It would see use as a delivery truck, staff, car, and an artillery mover. 
but is probably best remembered for being adapted for ambulance duty. Many of the Model Ts would be produced in the standard black, and it would be left to American GIs to paint the cars in the iconic olive color that American military vehicles became known for during the war. A total of 5,340 Model Ts were ordered for use by the United States Army. The potential of these ambulances would see France order 2,400 for frontline use. Even during the early periods of the war, when Ford was reluctant to provide any support to the Allies, through some creative acquisition processes, France were able to purchase and adapt 11,000 Model Ts for the French Army. Britain would go on to accumulate a massive fleet of 20,000 to 30,000 Model Ts, whilst the United States military would go on to use the likes of Jeep and Humvee as an adaptable light-duty vehicle after the war. The sheer versatility of the Model T during World War I would be vital for the support of Americans and the Allies. Ford would sell the U.S. military thousands of chassis for various uses and would even pull units from stock to respond rapidly to the war effort. The United States military would acquire some 15,000 Model Ts, which would allow the American Expeditionary Force to be the first truly motorized military operation in history. The flexible and reliable Model T would show that the days of the horse and cart are not just numbered in American middle-class suburbs, but also on the future battlefield. Chapter 5. Ford 3-Ton M, 1918. The Ford 3-Ton M, 1918, was one of the first American design tanks. Weighing in at 3 tons, 14 feet in length and a width and height of 6 feet, this small tank was designed to be crewed by two people, a driver and a gunner. The tank was armed with an M1917 Marlin machine gun and later on an M1919 Browning machine gun. Powered by two Ford Model T engines producing 45 horsepower, this tank had a range of 55 kilometers or 34 miles and a maximum speed of a dizzying 8 miles per hour. The M1918 allowed American troops to operate its own indigenous tank, having had to rely on British and French tanks, notably the Renault FT thus far in the war. An initial production run of 15 vehicles were built and tested in France. A contract for 15,000 tanks was awarded to Ford, but the U.S. Tank Corps felt the vehicle did not meet their needs and the armistice ended the contract with only the original 15 vehicles ever produced. Two known examples remain, one at the U.S. Army Armor Cavalry Collection at Fort Benning, Georgia, and the other at the Ordnance Collection at Fort Lee, Virginia. Whilst the three-ton had a negligible impact upon the war, it did prove that the United States had the capability to design and build its own tank and would go on to reduce American reliance on foreign powers. Chapter 6. Eagle Class Patrol Boat The first vehicle out of Ford's Rouge plant in 1918 was not a Model T, but rather a submarine chaser called the Eagle Class Patrol Boat, fully utilizing Ford's innovative production line, manufacturing. Ford was churning out one boat every ten days, a record-breaking feat. Henry Ford himself would state in relation to Ford Motor Company's efforts to build the boat, they were built simply by applying our production principles to a new product. This would be a guiding principle for the Ford Motor Company whenever the United States of America was in need. No more so than 20 years later in World War II. The Eagle class patrol boat was over 200 feet in length and displaced 625 tons. The boat sought to replace the limited capability of the existing wooden hull submarine chasers, which were limited to coastal work. Henry Ford would be summoned by the President of the United States, Woodrow Wilson, in June 1917 to serve on the United States Shipping Board. Wilson was seeking to leverage Ford's mass production techniques to speed up shipbuilding. When the German U-boat threat was highlighted to Ford, he would be quickly drawn in by the Secretary of the Navy, Josephus Daniels, to build a new craft that no other facility in the United States was capable of producing. He would be directed to produce 
100 to 500 Eagle-class anti-submarine patrol boats for the United States at a price of $275,000 per ship. By Armistice Day, seven ships had been sent to the Atlantic coast, but only two had arrived. The original contract was reduced to 60 ships. The ships would go on to see action in World War II, where they were actively engaged in anti-submarine warfare. Only one ship, Eagle 56, was sunk by a German submarine when torpedoes hit the bow and stern, resulting in the loss of 49 men. The remaining boats were decommissioned after the conclusion of the Second World War. Chapter 7. Post-War Fort. Following the signing of the armistice by the Germans on November 11, 1918, the fighting on land, sea and air ended. The peace between Germany and the Allies was formalized in the Treaty of Versailles on June 28, 1919, exactly five years after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. With the conclusion of the war and the breakout of an unsettled peace between the belligerents of the Great War, Henry Ford and the Ford Motor Company resumed normal peacetime construction of the Model T. Henry Ford would take over a newspaper titled The Dearborn Independent in 1919. He would use the paper as a means to spread his specific views on pacifism and would controversially name the Jews as profiteering from the war. These views would be picked up by a young Austrian drifter and failed artist named Adolf Hitler. We all know how that ended. The Ford Motor Company would go on to more success after the war. By 1923, over half of the cars produced in the United States would be Ford. And by the end of the 1920s, Ford would have more than 20 overseas assembly plants in Europe, Latin America, Canada, Asia, South Africa, and Australia. A total of 15 million Model Ts would be produced. It would be 20 short years before the world was plunged into another horrifying conflict, and the Ford Motor Company and a bevy of new car manufacturers were called upon by their respective nations to contribute to the war effort in new and unprecedented ways. The war to end all wars turned out to be anything but. However, the motor industry never looked back from this turning point in world history and would come to redefine how we live, work, and play. If you like this type of content and would like to see more, please like, subscribe, and comment on this video. We appreciate all your help to grow this channel and the community. Until next time on The Car Cult.